Battery powered air pumps are common and can easily be bought from local fish stores but the downside to such pumps are that you need to replace the batteries each time they run out or recharge the batteries with a separate charger. You also need to be there to switch it on in case of a power loss in your house. In this video I will show you how to modify such a pump to recharge and start up automatically in case of a power loss. So sit back, relax and let's get started. Let's try to run off the pump with a normal power bank. Note that the power bank outputs 5 volts but the air pump only needs 1.5 volts considering the type of battery used. I will use an LM2596 buck converter to step down the voltage from 5 volts to 1.5 volts. The list of necessary parts and the wiring diagram will be in the description. Going over voltage can kill the motor or wear out the pump quite fast. I will connect the power bank to the input marked in the buck converter temporarily. Make sure of the polarity and not to short out the contacts. The output from the buck converter goes to the motor of the pump. Don't turn on the switch for the pump till we use a voltmeter to check the output from the buck converter. The potentiometer in the buck converter should be turned counterclockwise in order to reduce the voltage and vice versa. You can use your fingernail or a small screwdriver to adjust the potentiometer. If you would like to speed up the pump, you can slowly turn the potentiometer clockwise to increase the voltage by a small amount. We need a 5V relay in order to turn the pump on and off automatically. The wiring diagram for the relay will be in the description. We need a copper dot board in order to hold the components in place. I drilled a small hole so that all the contacts of the relay can be fixed into the dot board like so. I will also add some flux to help solder the contacts to the board. I highly recommend using flux when soldering since it helps meet the parts together. Even the generic flux would not cost much but still would do the trick. We also need a TP4056 battery charge circuit which also has the DW01 battery protector. If you are only able to find the TP4056 without the DW01, you will need to buy a DW01 battery protector circuit so that your battery will not go over discharged. I will connect the charge controller to the dot board with copper wire which makes a conductive connection while holding the controller to the board in place. There are 6 contacts in the charge controller all of which should be connected to the dot board. I soldered in a diode to act as a flyback diode for the relay. A flyback diode is required when you are dealing with coils and one is used here since the relay is mainly a coil. I used terminal connectors to connect the battery and the buck converter to the dot board. But you can just solder in them directly if you wish so. I used a permanent marker to mark in the polarity of the connection so that I do not connect the battery or the buck converter in the wrong way. I used copper wire to complete the connections with the components. The link to the complete wiring diagram can be found in the description.
I thereafter connected wires to the 18650 battery by soldering it in place. This method is not recommended since it heats up the battery. I used a piece of sandpaper to clean up the terminals. I added a bit of flux and soldered in the wire. I used electrical tape to secure the wire more firmly and to cover up the battery terminals. I connected the battery and an LED to the circuit to test it out, but I came across a small issue. The LED stayed on till I plugged in the power, but the LED did not turn back on after I disconnected the power. When I used the voltmeter to check out the circuit, there was around 1 volt still powering the relay. So I added a diode between the positive of the TP4056 input and the relay. After I tested it out again, everything worked as planned. Now it's time to fix all these components into the air pump. I desoldered the battery connectors which were meant for the desized battery so that I can solder the wires from the motor to the buck converter. I also added another diode as a flyback diode for the motor since motors are comprised of coils as well. I added spaces to the buck converter board so that I can mount it to the casing of the upper. I used two pieces of double sided tape to stick the control circuit to the casing since I did not have enough room to use spacers and bolts. The battery was the perfect size to have a grip onto the casing without needing any glue, but you can use hot glue or double sided tape to stick it in place. I connected the buck converter and the battery to the control circuit and stuck it down to the casing while aligning it to the opening I previously cut to fit a micro USB cable. Always use a check well when you are going to connect your air pump to the air stone or air line in the aquarium. If any water cycles back into the pump, it will destroy your motor and other components.
Once I plug in the power, the pump stops working and charges the battery. But after it's disconnected or there is a power loss to your house, the pump starts back up, ensuring that your aquarium stays aerated. We hope you liked the video and learned something from it. Feel free to comment your thoughts below and remember to subscribe for more videos.